such as financing new production and consumption, but not enough to keep the people of the world in perpetual bondage. It is my opinion that there should be an outright ban on derivatives, credit default swaps, bank financing of hedge funds. What they are allowed to do should be tightly regulated. My reasons for not recommending 100% government created money are as follows. The first is the politics of getting something done. For more than a century, far-sighted, dedicated, and passionate individuals have fought valiantly to change the system, but to no avail. Even Milton Friedman, who had been proposing 100% cash reserves for a long time, gave up. He had learned this at the feet of his mentors, uh, Lloyd Mintz and others, who belonged to the original Chicago school of the 1930s. But he finally said that he tired of tilting at windmills. So he did that irrational flip-flop from 100% reserves to 0% reserves. And you have to wonder about the judgment of a person who goes from one extreme to the other without considering any intermediate uh, position. I believe that faced with the incredible financial resources available to the banking cartel, that any solution that would take away their power to create money totally would be a political non-starter. The second reason is that banking is a big industry. It employs thousands of people with stable jobs. And bank shares under normal conditions are a significant part of the overall financial structure of savings, retirement income, <clears throat> and investment. Even with a leverage of three to one, it would still earn a better return on capital than many industries, though the playing field would be a lot less uneven than it has been in recent years. My third reason is fundamental. After a lifetime in and around politics, I have to admit that I do not trust politicians enough to have them in charge of distributing all of the new money required for economic growth and prosperity. We would inevitably develop a system that would be just as subject to cronyism and just as corrupt as the one we have now. A system under which the money creation function is shared between government and the financial industry would be much more transparent for both. The greatest reform of all, however, would be immediate action. We can't allow the current slump with millions of people unemployed and others still being displaced from their houses, farms, and businesses to continue for years as we did in the 1930s. We don't need and don't want another war to bail us out, unless that war is a war against poverty, homelessness, and inadequate health care. <laughs> Finally, due to climate change, the future of the world, these are things that I've developed in my new book, A Light at the End of the Tunnel. The uh, recipe for saving the world, really, for human habitation. I take the position that we've got a maximum of about 10 years to stop global warming and get rid of the fossil fuel economy. If we don't do that, the world will no longer be a happy habitat for the human species. So that situation, our world as we've known it, is in imminent danger. The technology for a fast transition from fossil fuels to clean energy exists, but it is keeping kept secret probably almost definitely by some of the people who are involved in the Wall Street meltdown. Even if it is disclosed, which it must be, 
The present banking system will prevent the kind of action necessary to save the world in time. So action must be swift and comprehensive. The future of the world is literally at stake.